Two Davids Walk Into a Bar is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Every punk in this town is scared stiff. They say he can't be killed. They say he drinks blood. Is there a six-foot bat in Gotham City? Vicki Vale. Bruce Wayne. And what do you do for a living? I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. If a bat wants to play, we'll play! (laughs) Was that over the top? Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. Batman will watch his beloved Gotham perish. Bundle up, boys. There's a storm coming. Listen to this lineup of TV shows currently on the air. Daredevil, Flash, Gotham, Supergirl, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Legends of Tomorrow, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Arrow, Preacher, Iron Fist, which I hope is not porn. (laughs) And in the fall, we're getting more. The Defenders, The Gifted, The Punisher, Krypton, Inhumans, and that's just TV. At the multiplex last year, we had Captain America 3, X-Men 6, Batman vs. Superman, Deadpool, Doctor Strange, Suicide Squad, and Ninja Turtles 5, and already this year we've had Wolverine 3 and Lego Batman, with Wonder Woman, Justice League, Spider-Man 6, and Thor 3 in the can. And if you had that many guys in your can, you'd be Thor (laughs) 2. cost today is like ridiculously large amounts so you yeah. take a movie like batman versus superman which is probably what their biggest budget ever i think 200 million 350 you, you, when all is said and done i think it costs like 350 when you factor in what it costs to make and the budget and promotion and everything we're talking 350 whoa yeah, that's ridiculous. So oh then my you, God. you take that. OK, so I don't understand it, this either. But, because... OK, so but then it makes it makes eight hundred and some million, which it should have made more because it, it, like a lot of people didn't like it. And I'm not one of them, but I can see I can see their complaints. I well, this but, doesn't look, you know, OK, this is the problem with me. I with these new movies and Batman versus Superman is one of them is that this is like $250 million and it looks like a cartoon. I mean, it's just so, and everything is animated. The Wonder Woman trailers, I, I'm taking I'm taking the family to see the movie on Sunday, right? Yeah. I, I'm not expecting much because it just looks like a bunch of animated stuff going mm, on. I've heard, here's what I've heard. It's actually, like story-wise and acting-wise, it's so good that when they do throw like the sort of the video game aspects of it, you don't care because it's so well made and it's it's, it's more character driven. All right, we'll see. I mean, so, Gal, Gal Gadot looks really hot, so she does, and and she's in Batman vs Superman, sort of introducing. She's the best. The she's probably the best part of that movie. Although I, I thought she also, was with you. It's really cute. Yeah, I will also defend Batfleck. I thought he was really good. Batfleck. I uh, will not. Okay, I will but not. Yes. This. This is gonna. This is my my central complaint with Batman and what Christopher Nolan has done to it. He's taken. I feel like he's taken. You're probably going to disagree with me, and a lot of yeah. people would anyway. I, I will say, 2005. I really enjoyed the hell out of Batman Begins. I think it's the best movie out of the series. I, I but as we move into Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, I feel that he took he took a lot of the fun out of Batman, and he his his idea of supervillains is to say that they have some kind of uh, morality about them or immorality that is worth exploring in an intellectual sense. And he gives these people philosophies. When I saw Heath Ledger's Joker, I was I was appalled because the Joker is supposed to be 
insane baddie baddie lunatic kind of guy who just does crazy ass shit i'm really kind of more into the cesar romero or jack nicholson versions of it have you seen suicide squad i have not seen Suicide. you might squad. like the jared leto he's a little more just sort of weird and crazy He's suppo- he, that, that's the Joker, man. He's supposed to be weird. And he's barely he's, in it. So. He's not supposed to be, okay, I'm going to give you this bomb, and you're going to have to blow up these people if you want to save your life. And and it's like, why are you doing this? And Bane does the same thing. Bane was not me- was never meant to be a character like that. Bane was meant to be, actually, sadly enough, Bane is closer to his version of, of, of that character in Batman and Robin, where he's just like, are you sure about that? Cause I heard, yes. that, I heard that Bane was, cause I don't, I'm not a big comic book, but I heard Bane, Bane, Bane is a later character. He was created around the time of the TV show. He wasn't really, he, he wasn't like, uh, he wasn't part of Bob, Bob Kane's original <laughs> canon. Of, okay. So, so remember people in the comments, this is all David mm-hmm. Lawler saying all these blasphemous things about Bane and, and everything. <laughs> Bane is like, I mean, like, he's like, I will destroy you. I'm going to do this. And you're going to die. <laughs> I am Bane. I'm here to destroy you. <laughs> and meanwhile, everybody's going, what? Huh? I can't I understand it, you. <laughs> I give it back to you. The people I'm gonna blow up your football players. <laughs> <laughs> see, but, uh, I can see why they did. But see, here's the, here's what I feel like. Um, these Nolan movies, it's almost like he's 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 doing a Michael Mann film and then putting Batman and the criminals in. There. Very much that the beginning and of Dark Knight is thing so that's... similar to the robbery and heat. Yeah, it the only me thing so that's missing that. is uh, Al Pacino. Great ass. <laughs> and you got your head all the way up it. Yeah. Don't waste my cool. motherfucking life. Anyway, but that's my Nolan is great, but he takes himself way too seriously. I think he's a fantastic director when he's doing a movie like Memento, or 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 Inception? what did I really like? Inception. Uh, Inception has its moments, but it's not a great uh, movie there's for me. The, the Prestige. The Prestige, I loved. I loved uh, the Prestige. He's got a new movie coming out that looks really good. It's called Dunkirk. Dunkirk, okay. Which is something that I saw. I happened. I saw a movie. I think it was when I saw um, Rogue One, and it was probably better than Rogue One. They took like a segment of that movie and just showed it as like an IMAX trailer. They just showed like sort of a war, and it looked sort of Saving Private Ryan ish. Well, I think you really hit like it on the nose. On. I think you hit it on the nose when you mentioned Michael Mann, because I think what Nolan wants to be is he wants to be like a mixture of Michael Mann and Ridley Scott. Maybe with a little yeah. Tony Scott thrown in. Well, unfortunately, both Michael Mann and Ridley Scott are not making the best movies lately. So, mm. you know, this is true. Um, so, but but that for me was my my central issue with the Batman movies of of late because I I felt like I really couldn't. I it's sort <laughs> of like the Lethal Weapon problem. It's like you remember specific moments about the movie Lethal Weapon, but when it comes to the plot, you really can't put it together in your head. I remember what the hell there is was this about? A Gary Busey. <laughs> there was uh, there was a naked woman that fell off a thing and landed yeah. on a car. You got, little bits. I'm getting got, too old for this shit. You know. You got Mel Gibson doing the Three Stooges stuff, which right. they then complete. It's like I noticed with the Lethal Weapon movies, every time something would work, they would beat you over the head with it in the next yes, one. Yes, yes. So there just there was more. Like, oh Three my Stooges. god! Like like there Joe, was Pesci. More Joe Pesci. <laughs> Joe Pesci was in Lethal Weapon two for like ten minutes, and then they put him in half the movie Lethal Weapon three, and then he's like, <laughs> Do I get a gun? <laughs> But um, no. but that's my problem with Nolan's movies is I really don't remember much about them. Whereas I can I can quote you every scene from the from the first, at least the first two Batman movies. Batman Forever gets a little bit confusing too. So and Batman and Robin was just a mess to watch. But anyway, um, I I watch Gotham actually. I'm a big fan, even though it's kind of a terrible show. Mm. It's 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 but it's so it's so strange because it's so well made. It's beautifully shot gotham is the lighting the cinematography this the the set design all the technical stuff this this show should clean up at the emmys every year i don't know if it does or not unfortunately but unfortunately tr- the writing to, and the yeah. performances are terrible it started a trend though because now you have like you know know, know the story behind it, so now you've got supergirl so now you've that's got, true now Super you've Girl, got supergirl's spin-off. not terrible you got, but now you got a spinoff krypton so it's just going to be a bunch of whiny just, well, yeah, yeah, on yeah. Krypton. I remember so, um, I, uh, Bill Maher was complaining about that two weeks ago. He's talking about it's just comic books now. Comic book movies, comic book TV shows. That's everything. Well, we had Star Wars ripoffs for forever. Mm. Um, and not, not to skip, not to like skip, you know, over to different, you know, 
comic book companies, but darn it if Marvel doesn't know what they're doing. Because <laughs> well, every- now they do. I mean, you know, Marvel was for a long time. Marvel was a joke in the industry. It was, yeah, it was, it was a company like- that was being bought and sold every five minutes. Stanley, I guess, didn't have the right kind of skills to promote until he actually started going out there and doing and promoting himself. So he was yeah, promoting was like himself. The, the, the he's brand, he's become yeah. a, a pop culture figure. He's the goodwill ambassador. To- and, yeah, Marvel. I mean, I did, there's a lot of things I enjoy. Spider Man was a big hit. You know, Chris mm-hmm. Cooling, our, our colleague, Chris Cooling, uh, uh, put together a bunch of shows about the superheroes and stuff. Yeah. And there was a couple of Marvel things in there that are kind of fun, a little bit cheap, because Stanley's the kind of guy who's like, "What? You're interested in doing a TV show on Spider Man? Well, how much money are you willing to give me? Five bucks? Okay, I'll take it. It's yours." Well, see, that's the thing. <laughs> of, once, that was back once, then, though. Once they sort of came up with the plan, which actually started at Paramount. Um, when they did Iron Man, when they started like that plan of what they were going to do and they yeah. were going to build up to the Avengers. And yeah. then they have a couple successful movies. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then they say, hey, Paramount, you want to buy us? And yeah, they go, they, they, mm-hmm. they had. Yes. And then they pass. And so Disney buys them and they they have the unlimited resources of Disney money now and they can do whatever they want. And so they're able Absolutely, to take yeah. and they're they're such a creative. They haven't made a bad Marvel movie. And some could say like Thor two maybe, but even that has its goofy charms. And that's like the worst of all of them is still pretty good. And then they're either very good or excellent. So would you really? I mean, where, I guess where where your your allegiances lie is more in Marvel, right? Because I'm more of a I see myself more as a detective comics kind of guy. Only because, because they have, I, they have Batman more and product. Superman to me are like the biggest superheroes. They have because only because they have more product that's always been good. You always know you're going to get a good movie and you're going to be entertained. And I'm not like a comic book nerd, nerd boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going in as a movie goer, but like when you have that Marvel stamp of approval, you know, it's going to be good. Whereas DC, what do you get with DC? The only good thing you get with, you get the first Superman, Christopher Reeve, you get that. Okay. Yeah. Which isn't even has nothing to do with DC. It's, it's all Warner brothers and the Saul kinds really. Um, you have the later Superman movies, which get increasingly crappy. Then you have, um, you have like nothing, and then you have Batman, which again, a lot of these DC things aren't really about DC. They're more about Warner Brothers, who owns them, and they're like, yeah, yeah, just we'll just slap the name on, and we'll just like they don't have like a clear vision. Then they start to like they say, oh well, Marvel's doing this, so we'll have we'll start to create sort of a clear vision of what we want to do. We're, we'll we'll start we'll re we'll we'll bring Superman back. With Zack Snyder, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and we'll do Man of Steel, which I I, I hate less <laughs> than I did. But again, coming from the Chris Reeve Superman to this, it's just it doesn't quite. Yeah, I know. I it know. doesn't quite hit it. I under I can see what they're trying to do, which is why I for some reason I like Batman versus Superman more, even though it's it's a continuation of that, only because it's it's so big and so loud. And so much over the top. I like it for some reason. It's like a, it's like an experience almost. I'm not gonna say it's a great movie, mm-hmm. but it has its moments, and I actually like it more. And also, I mean, I've got I got like a new sound system, and I was cranking it up, and I'm like, this is the sort of movie you get it on Blu-ray, you get like a big screen TV, you get surround mm-hmm. sound, and you just crank it up, and you watch Destruction, and you watch Batman and Superman, yes. and, and and also it's just stupid enough that you can make fun of it. <laughs> you know, there's stuff in it where you can make fun of it. Whereas a Marvel movie, they make fun of it in the movie. They'll mm. make fun of the stupidity of what's going on in the movie. And whereas these DC movies, you, you go, well, oh, I, well, you know, I, I would say, you know, I, I didn't like, I didn't like Ang Lee's version of, of the incredible Hulk. I like the sequel more. Well, see that, but, that, but, I like Eric Bana better as an actor than I like Edward Norton. Mm. So, <laughs> so well, it's see, kind of like a Incredible Hulk is one of those me. sort of it's sort of a halfway Marvel movie where it's because Universal owns the rights to certain things, which is why you'll never see a a Marvel Disney produced Hulk movie, but you can see the Hulk in different like they can't they can't legally do a standalone hulk movie but they Mm -hmm. can put the hulk in in any of the other movies so you're gonna have like the third thor movie is gonna have hulk on it and they're actually gonna they're sort of working in the whole planet hulk 
thing. Like somehow Thor gets cast off on another planet and then he meets Hulk and it's sort of the end part end of the planet Hulk storyline. So yes. then, and then they have to fight. And I'll tell you to... though, I did, I, I did enjoy Nick Nolte in the first Hulk movie. I, uh, I thought he was wonderful. Uh, uh, I mean, that's, and I, that's... I love his, I love his soliloquy that he has where he's talking about government corruption. I thought it was fantastic. Think about all those men out there in their uniforms, barking and swallowing orders, inflicting their petty rule over the entire globe. Think of all the harm they've done to you, to me, to humanity. And know this, that we can make them and their flags and their anthems and their governments disappear in a flash. You, he and me, I'd rather die. Oh, that's your answer. And indeed you shall die and be reborn a hero. Of the kind that walked the earth long before the pale religions of civilization infected humanity's soul. No! And, he, and I was like, but I was, but in the back of my head, I'm like, this isn't the Incredible Hulk. No. This is some writer who's really pissed off. <laughs> you know? But that is the movie that gave us the, the famous Nick Nolte mugshot because I think he was shooting that movie and he was on something and he wandered over somewhere. I love the look on his face in that mugshot. He's like, yeah, 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 I did something. So what? And then they just he's been basically playing that character since these for 15 years. He's just been kind of like weird, whacked out Nick Nolte. Right. It kind of gave him a new career almost. <laughs> um, But I will say for in Gotham's defense, it gets. Yeah certain visual touches right there there was a scene with all of the bad guys all under one roof you had um uh, you know who were they they were they were destined to become because it's of course an origin story like we do all the time so we've got the guy playing the riddler we've got the guy playing the penguin we've got uh the uh, Catwoman, and we've got poison ivy and they're all like under one roof and, and there's a there's they the cocked Joker. the camera Oh. They cocked the camera. They ah. actually did like a little wink to the Batman show, which is awesome. I love no Joker yet. No Joker yet. No Joker. Well, there was a Joker character and he was very interesting. He, he actually, he was a lot more interesting to me than Heath Ledger's character. But he is a complete, utter lunatic. And he becomes like this weird cult leader in a, in a way where he he cuts his face or something. Uh, um Actually, what happened, he loses his face entirely, puts another, staples another face to his, and his mouth is all fucked up. So he, for some reason, develops a cult of worshippers, and they all do the same thing to their face. Like oh. Ellen Jamesians from, like, The World According to Garp. It's really fascinating what they did, but lots of nice visual cues in the show. Like I said, the people who make the show are artists, but the people who perform in front of the camera are not. <laughs> well, I stopped watching after I think about like the first season because there are so many good shows on TV. It's well, yeah, it's hard I, to like, invest your have, time. Yeah, I'm like, I have to start making those tough decisions. These are first world problems. It's like, what show should I watch? Yes, 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 yes. So these are, I, these are white people's problems. These are white people <laughs> problems. <laughs> yeah, it's like which so one I, am I going to watch? It's all, but it's all comic books. And Bill Maher does have a point because it gets to be a little tiring after a while. You got. Uh, what was it? Arrow. You got Supergirl. You got oh, there was a Batman show a while back that didn't last very long. Uh, it was called Birds of Prey. Do you remember that? I don't even remember that one. Uh, Birds of Prey. Um, Dina Meyer was in it. Was that the one where it was she was Catwoman or was it? I believe so. Birds okay. of Prey TV series. I think it was on like the WB when it was the WB. It was on, yeah, it was on the WB. It only lasted 13 episodes, but it looked like it cost a lot of money. It was gorgeously shot. And this was back in the days when, you know, you actually had to shoot instead of do everything in a computer. But. <laughs> Legend tells of a caped crusader, Batman, guardian of New Gotham, and his one true love, Catwoman, the queen of the criminal underworld. Their passion left behind something extraordinary. A daughter, Huntress. Half meta human, she has taken up her father's mantle and fights to protect the innocent and helpless. Joining her in this struggle, Oracle, once Batman's protege, Batgirl. She was caught in the crossfire of the war between Batman and Joker. Now she fights crime a different way. A master of the cyber realms and trainer to heroes. 
Together, they have taken in Dinah, a metahuman herself, with powers that she is only beginning to explore. These three are the protectors of New Gotham, the birds of prey. My name is Alfred Pennyworth, and this is their story. Actually, it's ba- uh, you have Barbara Gordon. Okay, Barbara Gordon is is actually Batgirl, right? Yeah. And Dina Meyer played her, and uh, she led this group of pe- of girls, hotties. Uh, one of them was the daughter of the illegitimate daughter, if you will, of Batman and Catwoman, Helena Kyle, Helena, not Selena. Mm. And then you had uh, somebody else named Dinah Redman, a meta human. I don't know what that means. Oh, she's like a touch telepath, they call her. Uh, Something like that. <laughs> but uh, the, Ian Abercrombie, who has famously played Mr. Pitt on Seinfeld, played Alfred in this. Faithful oh. Butler to the Wayne family. He'd, so. he'd probably be a good... Oh, be and, uh, and Mia Sara played Harley Quinn. Probably her last known role <laughs> in I anything. I guess. But this she is was what, the, late, late 90s? Yeah, it was, let me see. No, it was October 2002 to February 2003. Oh, wow. Okay. Comic so, books. <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I'm not a huge comic book guy. <coughs> Neither uh, am I. I got in. I. 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 I was like into comic books, but more for the the OCD collecting of them. Mm. And I got into them when I was like about thirteen. From about thirteen to about thirteen and a half, I was very much into comic books. And I got like I and I still have them. I have GI Joe. Mm-hmm. I have when they brought back GI Joe, like in the eighties. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have G.I. Joe. I have the first, like, ten issues of the Transformers comic book. I have The Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. I have... I probably... Ha- and I still have them. I just never sold them. And I don't... It's like I have no emotional connection to them. And I could probably sell them for, you know, a couple hundred bucks, maybe. I have... Okay, this is what I have. I'm not really... Again, like you, I'm not a comic book guy. I didn't get nuts. I uh, Around 1987, I had a job. When I was a kid, I, I, was like, I remember when I had a job, <laughs> I was like 14 or 15 um, and I had a job. It was just like a stupid little job. I got paid a couple of bucks a week or something like that. But whatever I got, uh, I had a shoebox, a Nike shoebox, Nike, uh, a big shoebox. And I, I, I bought comic books on occasion. So I bought a bunch. So there is like a pile of comic books that were purchased in 1987. And among them, I have a few like like Superman's. I have a few Batman's stuff like that. Uh, I also picked up the Dark Knight Returns. I got that as well. Um, well, you know, when I, when I was fourteen, fifteen, I had a box full of magazines, but it wasn't uh, <laughs> it wasn't comic books. I know that. I lived with my mother. She would never let me have any anything like that in the house, <laughs> and it wouldn't stop me. I... <laughs> the uh, but but it wasn't like a big deal to me. I just sort of bought them, read them, you know, that kind of a thing. It was just like you know, and and eighty seven. I don't think anything was going on in the, in that world except for Superman four, the quest for peace, yeah, which I saw in the theater. You saw that in the theater produced by Canon yeah. produced by Menachem and Yoram. And, um, all I can know, say is I hope Chris Reeve got paid up front. Oh yeah. Well, I actually, I heard he got $4 million, <laughs> but I don't know if, did he get, did he get that money? Did he get that money immediately? Cause I hope he did because they certainly didn't put it in the mon- in the movie. Well, <laughs> I don't did They promised something to him and he wrote the story or something. Right. Yeah. So it's he like I, well he they from what I understand he um, produced a movie uh, Street Smart for Street Cannon Smart. with Street with, Smart yeah yeah with Morgan Freeman in it right mm-hmm. and he, the promise was if you let me make this movie I'll do Superman for you mm-hmm. and they said okay yeah fine whatever and I heard that either he was a huge pain in the ass or they were a huge pain in the ass when he was trying to make that movie probably both. Probably it's both. like they wouldn't give him money and he wanted to do certain things and they wouldn't give him money because they didn't have any money. He's, <laughs> you know, I mean, like Christopher Reeve is a guy who who was a serious actor, you mm-hmm. know, and back then you didn't do things like that. They destroyed your career. Nowadays, they make you more popular doing that stuff. It's interesting, too. Uh, I was I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day and he had Bill Burr on and they were talking about how actors back back in those days couldn't do commercials because it would destroy their career so they would go to japan and shoot commercials so they showed yeah, this. and you can look them up on youtube there's all yeah whole yeah bunch of charles, commercials charles like bronson doing an ad for a whiskey in japan arnold and schwarzenegger doing some sort of uh, sports drink thing but nowadays i mean look at how much has changed they're, the movie stars are all over commercials now. Well, they're not, they're not only on commercials; they're on commercials. They're, they they'll do a series. Like I just watched the new. I'm watching the new season of Fargo. You got Ewan McGregor 
playing two he's playing twin brothers on that show you oh, wow. now is he a list mm, close it's hard you know I, it's so A-minus. hard because i don't think we have stars anymore i really think the star system yeah but it's a good thing in a way because it, it keeps you out in the public eye like they kind of it's kind of more the british like it doesn't like they do they'll do a tv they'll do a series and then they'll do a movie mm-hmm. yeah it's just it keeps them out there and TV is so good now. I can see why they go there. Cause hey, yeah, do you remember how there was a separation of powers back in the 60s and 70s? You would have your TV stars and then you would have your movie stars and you never mixed them. Now they're mixing all over the place. And that's You'll not find a problem. Big stars on TV shows now. I, I'm not surprised anymore when I see a big name, a guy who was big, a guy or a girl who wore big names to me. Showing up on TV shows, it doesn't surprise me to see them anymore. Or you'll watch, like, say, Westworld. You got Anthony Hopkins there. Anthony freaking Hopkins is on a TV show, and he's know? good on it too. And and you know, so many other people pop. You know, it's just it, it it's amazing what's happened. But uh, you know, back back in the days of say, like when Batman was shot or something, Adam West didn't appear in like big uh, t- uh, d- theatrical movies or something like that. I think he was like kind of on the rise as far as movies at the time or something like he was mm-hmm. a well-known actor. He was doing movies. He was probably doing like, me- like medium low movies and then he'd do TV, but he was kind of like in a certain level. He was probably in that Shatner level. I would guess maybe, um, maybe a little bit, maybe a little under Shatner as far as, so, that. but he's doing yeah. that. And then what does he do after this? He does all I know from is happy hooker goes Hollywood. That's all I know. <laughs> and he had a mustache and, you know, it was very interesting. And that was like 10 years after that, after Batman. This is like late 70s that he did that. So I don't right. even know what he was doing. I'm going to guess he did a lot of guest star, like Love American Style, Love Boat, those kind of things. <coughs> right, Fantasy yeah. Island, those, those kind of things. I was trying to gain superpowers. 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 Yeah. Uh-huh. 